Hey guys, I am super stoked to share this week's episode with you. I think you're really gonna like it. My buddy Chris Hill joins. We talk about investment and retirement planning. We talk about side hustles, and we talk about his favorite basketball player from the Utah Jazz. Thanks for being here. I, hey Ryan, I am glad to be here. I was I was telling my wife and and kids how excited I was to to chat with one of my most favorite humans who've <laughs> ever come into my life. And if I'm not mistaken, I think it was about 12 years ago. 08, 09, or 10 or something. I think it was 08. I think it was that jazz season of 08, 09. That winter. The jazz, obviously, not your full time gig. So, what what is it technically or officially what you do? Yeah, so that's not my full time gig. That's fun, you know. People always say, Chris, you're a hustler because I'm always trying to find ways to make money, even if it's working a jazz game for 40 bucks a game. Um, my full time gig, though, so no, I work for Fidelity Investments. Um, this is my 15th year working for Fidelity out of our Western Regional Office in Salt Lake City, Utah. So I, you know, Fidelity, obviously a nationwide company um, that helps with financial planning, investing, these different type things. I work in what's called wealth services, um, formerly known as portfolio advisory services. And my actual job title is I'm a senior portfolio specialist. So it all sounds really big and important. And, you know, I mean, I guess it is, but so I am involved in our discretionary money management. There's a lot of people in this world who need help with investing. And there's a lot of different ways you can go about that. Um, but there are people who want nothing to do with this. And, and it can be for a variety of reasons, whether the time, the inclination, the desire, the resources, the expertise. So they turn their assets over to us. So we have the fiduciary responsibility and discretionary, discretionary control um, to manage this for them. They pay us a fee. And my investment management team in Boston they're the ones that are doing the analysis and research and building portfolios. I'm the liaison relationship piece with that investment management team in Boston and then the clients. You you were the first, you know, the first person that came to mind because um, recently we were going through open enrollment, right? It's like, hey, choose your new benefits on and all that kind of stuff. And where I work, they also kind of outline like, hey, do you want to make any changes to retirement, 401k? Do you want to, how we, you know, invest uh, all these types of funds for you? And I started thinking there's probably others out there that are probably going through the same thing um, who are maybe looking to jumpstart or begin planning for future um, without work. Um, and I think 2020 probably has taught us that we probably want to start thinking about some of those things. So, um, for, the, for, for those of us that are kind of just jumping into this or want to make some changes, where's the best place to start? Yeah, gr great question. And you're right. 2020 has transformed everything in our lives every single day. Yeah. Um, it, it's made a lot of people really wake up and realize, you know, what what is going on? And, you know, we look nationwide at the high unemployment uh, that we're seeing right now because of the pandemic. Um, and, you know, yeah, we just went through open enrollment benefit. We're where do I begin? How do I start? And so, you know, I always tell people, number one, the key to starting is understanding what you have. You've got to understand that first. Yeah. And yes, there are companies out there that do a really good job of explaining the benefit package and what it is and how it works. There's a lot of companies out there that say, make your elections. Here you go. Have a nice day. And yeah. you're sitting there going, what do I do? Um, not to give a shameless plug here, but there's a lot of companies out there, you know, Fidelity being one of them. If you're near one of our local investor centers now, granted right now with the pandemic, everything's shut down. So we're doing everything, you know, digitally, Zoom appointments. But Fidelity is a company that you can talk to one of our planners for free. There's no cost. So okay. to sit down and say, you know, hey, I have some questions here. Now we're not experts on your work benefit plan, but we at least understand what some of these benefit plans are and how they work. When you're looking through this and going, what are my options with my investing in my 401k that my work provides? What does this even mean? Yeah. Um, and so you can get some advice, suggestions, you know, we're not gonna tell you what positions you need to buy that one or that one, but we can go through and explain it and help you understand it and start that relationship because where that begins with the work piece is one side. Yeah. Well, what am I doing on my personal side outside of work? Yep. Am I doing any sort of retirement planning at all on this side for me? I get this here, which is great, but what am I doing here? 
And that's where those planners can actually look at it and say, hey, you know, okay, well, let's take care of this, but what are you also doing over here? You know, do you have Roth IRAs for those who qualify? Uh, are you doing any type of tax smart investing with your after-tax assets? Things of that nature, and that's a great place to start. So, you know, find a local company that's not gonna charge you an arm and a leg. Some places will say, yeah, we'll do this for 300 bucks. No, don't do that. Because you can call Fidelity and, and get that advice or that help for free. Um, but find someone that can answer those general basic questions for you. That's awesome. I think that's great um, because I like what you put put out there too. That you have the work side, but you also have the other side too, right? And so you want to make sure that you're balancing that um, to help you out. You, you do, and, and and back to that work personal. You know, on the work side, we're getting those benefits, and, and one of the cool things is, you know, generally there's like an employer match or something yeah. else in those benefits. And, and we don't think a lot about it because it's being taken out of our paycheck, usually pre-tax, it's set over here, it's done. But on that personal side, you know, um, we live in a world where everybody wants it now. And in many cases, we see it every day, people live beyond their means. So on the personal side, you know, sit down, start with a, a budget, a plan. Understand where's my money going each month. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I look at it always as finance is one of the most important aspects of our life, if not the most important, because we have to have it to live. Yeah. But every one of us neglect it because none of us want to deal with it. We always say, I'll do that later. I'll do it later. So it, it, on the personal side, sit down and, and do a budget. You know, I have a spreadsheet. People laugh at me. I like spreadsheets. I like yeah. to make pretty colors on them. Uh, I know what every expense is I have every single month. Now. That's great, I know that, because it's a starting point. But then for me, when I get paid, the first thing that happens is my expenses are paid first. Mm -hmm. My living expenses are paid first. That way I know no matter what, nothing's gonna happen to my house. You know, my car insurance is up to date on my cars. I, I have groceries. Then I can take, and you'll hear it in the financial world talked about as essential expenses versus discretionary expenses. You know, the discretionary is the fun stuff we can always cut out if we have to. Yeah. I had a client tell me once, I've worked hard my whole life, Chris, and my travel and retirement's essential, it's not discretionary. So we had to build that in for her, because you can, you get to determine what's essential versus what's, what's discretionary. But on the personal front, understand what you have. What are you spending on a monthly basis? Where is my money going? And pay those expenses first before anything else. Um, so now, You've been at Fidelity for 14, 15 years. Um, knowing now what you know now, if you were to go back and change or do one thing differently, what would you do? It's always easy, the woulda, coulda, shoulda. Um, knowing what I know now, I, I kind of look at it three pronged, three pieces. Number one, we always have a long-term time horizon with investing. Yes, we have to look at the, the short term of now and the impact that has on the long term. You know, we got to look what's going on from now in the next three months, the next year, five years, 10 years, because people always laugh when I tell them this. And, and you know, a lot of the information we plan around is we plan to the furthest age possible. And the reason we do that is we don't want to plan because you think you're going to live to 88 and you're out of money at 88 and you live to 92. You're in trouble now. Yep. So we always plan based on the uh, actuarian tables, the American Society of Actuarians. Yep. They, they're the ones and you know, in the insurance world that you work in, I'm sure you're familiar with the, what they do. You have them on staff. Yep. We plan to their tables on what they say the average time span is. Now, as a female, you have a 50% chance to live to the age of 92. As a male, you have a 50% chance to live to the age of 89. That's because us men are dumb. We do dumb stuff. You know, those numbers go down the older you get. So when I plan, I'm generally putting in an age of 94, 95. And people always laugh at me when I say that. So you have to look at that long time horizon. What we're doing now is going to have an impact when we retire. You know, if you want to retire at 66 or 65 or 60, you then have to have enough money to live potentially for 20 or 30 years. So what are you doing now to make that easier then? That's the first piece. The second one is just have a plan. Yeah, That is the most important thing. We know plans can change, we know they can adapt. If you have a plan and you understand it in the investment world, like everybody freaked out when the market tanked back in February, pretty scary, you know? Yeah. We set an all-time record high in the market and we had the fastest sell-off ever in four weeks. The old record was set in 1957. 
So yeah. we, we crushed that record. We also saw the fastest recovery ever in the market coming back. Um, so when you have a plan, it's easier to stomach that volatility in those type of events because you know what my plan is. There's a saying in the investment world that volatility equals opportunity. You know, okay. we yeah. actually want there to be volatility because it lets us go to work and, and do things to make money for our clients. So that that's the next as a plan. The last one is me personally, I would have taken on more risk sooner, not just in I'm going to go load up on a whole bunch of stocks, but, you know, understanding what risk is and yeah. be willing to take certain risks. Um, sometimes you have to go with that gut feeling. Other times you got to go with the head and the heart. Yep. But I would have taken on more risks sooner on in life in general with certain things um, that I would have certainly been able to benefit from today. Now, lastly, with this, it's never too late to start. It is not. I don't care if you're 18 or you're 55. It is never too late to start planning for your future. Knowing that you still have opportunity to, to set something up uh, is, is definitely beneficial. What's the best financial advice that you've ever been given? Yeah, that's a good one. Cause after 15 years, going on 15 years in the yeah. industry, you get a lot of advice. You hear a lot of things. Yeah. Um, and, and there's kind of a quote I have on my desk at work that was Warren Buffett. You know, everybody wants to be Warren Buffett, a financial yeah. wizard, the Oracle of Omaha. Back in 08, when the pandemic was going on and I was young and early in my career, I'd only been in it a couple of years. You know, he said, we as investors need to be fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are fearful. You have to learn to think backwards. So when everything feels rosy and perfect and great, something's possibly on the horizon. You know, I'm not yeah. saying you run and go to cash, but yeah. you need to rebalance, take some of the profits off the table. And when things don't feel right, when things are horrible back in February and March and people are losing their minds and they're losing their lives, that's when you want to be ready to pounce and put money in. So, the, so that's kind of the first component. The second component to that and what I know now is don't live beyond your means. Yeah, we want all the fun, cool things today. We want that new iPhone every other year. We want the new car. You know, I'm a Dave Ramsey fan. I don't believe 100% in everything he preaches, but I do believe in a lot of it. I have family members and kids and friends and people who make fun of me. I haven't had a car payment since 2011. Yeah. And it's because I buy all my cars used. You know, vehicles depreciate faster than anything else when you buy them new. Now, if you're gonna buy it new and drive it for the next 10 to 15 years, great. Good luck, awesome, have fun. Yeah. But that's not the case. You know, 85% of people will not own that same car in five years. Yeah. You're throwing money away. So we save up and I pay cash for my automobiles and I buy used. You know, the last time I did it, I bought a 2013 minivan in 2015. It was two years old. Now here we are coming into 2020. We've been saving up next year. We're gonna upgrade to something newer. We'll yeah. probably get a 2018, 2019 and I'll pay cash for it because it is the greatest feeling in the world to not have that car payment hanging over my head. This is a probably a good time to interject. Great advice from Chris. In the comments below, let me know what advice stood out most to you or what additional questions do you have? Let's get back. Tell, tell us about this, this barbecue hustle that's going on. I love barbecue. And uh, one year for Christmas, I come downstairs and here's this nice big box from my wife and I'm trying to figure out what is in this box? This is huge. Yeah. And I kind of moved it a little bit and I'm like, okay, it's heavy. So this isn't like a box inside a box. And I'm kind of going back and forth. I'm thinking it's some sort of a tool because I'm a power tool kind of guy too. Yeah. Um, I open it up and it's a smoker. And I'm like, dude, this is the greatest gift you've ever bought me in my life. Like my <laughs> eyeballs just went crazy and so, um, you know, started messing around with smoking meats. Um, I'm a carnivore, I love it. And uh, that's what began this about six years ago was that first smoker she bought me. And the funny thing in this story, my wife's a vegetarian. So my vegetarian wife is buying me a smoker, but it just evolved from there. A couple of guys from work, a couple of my really good friends, you know, they started smoking foods. We kind of started doing things. Um, the first thing I ever smoked, you know, I'm thinking this is incredible. I think back now, dude, it was like beef jerky horrible. I'm yeah. so disappointed that I produced that, but you got to start somewhere. So that started this and then it grew from there. Started buying more smokers, better smokers, bigger smokers. So um, from there, my buddies at work and I started getting, you know, 
we think pretty good. We started getting compliments from people. So we took their compliments as, hey, this is good. And people started asking us to cater little family meals and things. And so we thought, all right, if we're going to do this, we got to be legit. Yep. Let's, you know, set up an LLC. Let's set up a little business. Let's get our food handler permits. Let's do it right. So we did. Yep. Um, so the company's name is actually Billy Hogs Barbecue. Yeah. Okay. B-I-L-L-Y-H-A-W-G-S Barbecue. You know, I've taken trips back east. You know, I've been to Kansas City, St. Louis, Memphis, down into Texas. Yeah. So we just always trying to perfect our craft, try new things. And uh, that's where it all started. And then a little side hustle for a little extra side cash. So uh, at the beginning, too, we, we talked about the jazz. I can't let you go without putting you on the hot seat. <laughs> I know you're a jazz fan. Who's your all-time jazz, favorite jazz man? You know, for me, that's actually a really easy question okay. because of the era I grew up in. You know, I was an 80s kid into the 90s, hands down John Stockton. Stockton. Um, okay. I know people hated him. They called him a dirty player. He was undersized, you know. They, they claim in the NBA stats he was 6'2". The dude was six feet tall. Um, he might have weighed 180 pounds. Yeah. Uh, he, he had to fight off for himself. But I, I look at just his tenacity on the court, how he approached the game. You know, you look at the records of the all-time assist, all-time still, they will probably never, ever be broken. You know, yeah. no one is even, even in that league to yeah. even come close to those. Um, and so I look at that tenacity and that approach he took to the game of basketball, and I've tried to imply that just to life in general. Um, yeah. You know, work hard. You put in the work. There's always people out there. I used to tell my son this in, in you know sports when he was playing sports. There's always people that are bigger, better, faster, and stronger. Bill, you can work twice as hard. You know, and, and I think that really applies to life in general. So it's John Stockton. You know, the guy was a workaholic with the game of basketball. Well, I appreciate you joining me today, and uh, thanks for your financial advice, and just talking a lot about how you can, you know, succeed in life, finance or not. So I appreciate it. Hey, thank you. Anytime. Appreciate it. That's awesome. Happy holidays, my friend. You too. Big thanks to Chris for our conversation. Um, I hope you took away from that conversation like I did uh, and just learned so much. Um, for me, the two big takeaways were one, it's never too late to begin planning for your retirement. And two, there's the benefits that your company provides as you think about retirement. And then there's a personal side as well. So making sure you balance contributing to both of those areas as you plan for those days when you don't have to work anymore. Hopefully you have a wonderful day. Thanks for joining us and we will see you next time on Take 10.